No. No. Hello. No, Mr. Callahan isn't back yet. Yes, he will be back, Mr. Moralton. No, I'll tell Mr. Callahan directly he comes in. I won't forget William Moralton. Good night. Why haven't you gone home? Get your wages Saturday, if that's what you're worried about. Go on, get out. I want to do some thinking. I thought you'd like me to wait. Millens has been again about the rent. He says if it isn't paid by Saturday, you'll be thrown out. Stay around just to tell me that. Oh, why don't you get some sense, Slim? You know you're finished here. Getting a kick out of it. Why should I get a kick out of it? Because you're tickled to death. The Callahan investigations is going up the spout. Well, you're wrong. You've got brains and drive. You get around. Why don't you take that job at the Weber Agency? At least you get your pay envelope each week. It's where you're going, isn't it? You thought the bloom was going up here weeks ago, so you grabbed yourself a job with Weber. Well, what if I did? Listen, if you want a reference, I'll give you one. I'll say you're a first-class typist with a 100% sex appeal. Not for me. Oh, one of these days something's going wrong with these smart Alex schemes of yours and you're coming a cropper. And I hope it hurts. You're a sweet little thing, Effie. Like sour milk. Detective Inspector Gringle's only waiting for you to make one slip. And when he gets you in the dock, I hope I'm there to laugh. The trouble with you, Effie, is you need a little fun and games. The boss has always been too busy. I want something better than some shady private detective who... who's broke. You didn't wait around to tell me that. Something's been going on around here. What is it? It's nearly 11.40 and we've got some business. What sort of business? Someone's been ringing you all evening. Anyone would think you were important. Who is she? What does she want? It wasn't a she, it was a he. And Mr. William Moralton has been ringing. He rang through for the last time, just before you came back. What did he want? He's sending a Miss Moralton round to see you. Who put Moralton on to me, did you say? Fingal, the lawyer. So it looks like one of those sort of cases, doesn't it? Well, suppose it is one of those sort of cases. What's it got to do with you? I fired you this afternoon. Do I have to do it all over again? No, you don't. I'll be glad to quit this dump. And you. Oh, get out. Mr. 
Callahan. Yes, I'm Callahan. You're Miss Peralton, aren't you? I'm afraid it's very late. Callahan investigations never sleep. Or hardly ever. Go inside. Sit down. That'll be all, Miss Perkins. I'll write you Saturday. You better. May I smoke? Sure, go ahead. I'll have one too. I've run out. What's on your mind? Mr. Callahan. I've only come here because Mr. Moralton, to whom I'm engaged, insists on it. He believes I'm in some sort of danger. What sort of danger? You've heard of August Moralton. Who hasn't? He's got all the money in the world. He's my stepfather. Oh. He can afford to make the lives of everyone round him a misery if they don't see eye to eye with him. He sounds delightful. Is he the fellow you think he may be in danger from? May I tell you this in my own way? Go ahead. There are four nephews. William, my fiancé, Bellamy, Paul and Jeremy. Bellamy, Paul and Jeremy are nearly always in some sort of trouble. They've spent the money their father left them and have little interest beyond women and drink. Is there any other? Depends on the sort of person you are, doesn't it? My stepfather knows that those three are simply waiting for him to die so they may have more money to waste. They come into the money? Under the original will, it's to be equally divided between the four nephews and myself. The original will? Yes. He's made a new one. He told us he typed it on a thin piece of copy paper and was carrying it in the back of his watch. He said if they knew what was in it, they'd hate him even more than ever. That didn't include you, or did it? Certainly not. Only the three. What about the fourth brother? Doesn't it affect him too? William, not so much. He still has his legacy from his father, and he manages my stepfather's estate. How do you come into it? Well, William believes that if any of the three of them could get my stepfather out of the way quickly and quietly, they'd do it. How would that affect you? He's afraid if they do something to their uncle so they can get the new will and destroy it, they try to hang it on me. Isn't that being a bit far-fetched? Does William honestly believe that? Yes, he does. It's why he insisted I should come and see you. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Mr. Fingal, the lawyer, said anyone would have to be very smart to be smarter than you, Mr. Callow. Very nice of him. Maybe he said some other things as well. He did. A certain Detective Inspector Gringle would give a year's pay to get his hands on you. He mentioned two cases in which you're supposed to fake the evidence. Something to do with alibis, I think. I see. Maybe you'll tell me who my client is. Is it you or your boyfriend, Willie? Does it matter? <laughs> well, if I'm supposed to act as a sort of watchdog for you and keep a fatherly eye on Bellamy, Paul and Jeremy, that's okay by me. But jobs like that cost money. There's 500 pounds in there. William said you were to have that on account. I think it's a great deal of money, but Mr. Fingal said you'd want everything you could get. Mr. Fingal's right, I do. Don't you? You'll be prepared if anything should happen, won't you? Good night, Mr. Callan. Not so fast, Miss Moralton. Why was it so urgent you had to see me here tonight? I don't want to discuss the matter anymore. It's late and I'm rather tired. Why wouldn't tomorrow morning have done? Or are you too tired to answer that one? I don't always give my reasons for seeing people that I employ, Mr. Callan. Suppose I wanted to see you. Here you are. It won't be necessary unless there should be any trouble. Since this, Moralton. Nice name. I like the sin part of it. Good night, Mr. Callahan. Good night, Miss Moralton. Bill. Cover tea, ham, sandwich, two packs of 20. Turn it up, Slim. Oh, no, you don't. Put them back where you got them from. If they're good ones, you can have what you want. There's still room on a slate. Take them a lot. They can't be real. It's on the arse tonight. Put them away. Give the place a bad name. Hello, Darky. Looking for you. Got a job for you. Aren't they good? Sure. Plenty more where they came from. Take this on account. 
On account of what? On account of what you're going to do for me. Now listen, there's an old boy called August Marold, and I want to know all about him. I know all about his nephews. There are four of them. William, Bellamy, Paul, and Jeremy. A Vaudeville Act? No, they're not a Vaudeville Act. Write them down. And the same for Darkie. But you got no art. Paul and Jeremy. I got that slim? He's got a stepdaughter called Synthes. Good looker with everything it takes. And a damn liar into the bargain. Now, I want to know why she calls herself Marolton instead of my father's name. And Darkie, go round to the press cutting field and find out all you can about the family. Thanks, Bill. And come round to my office when you got something. All right? All right. I'll try Sizer. Maybe he'll know something. Yes, try Sizer. He knows most things. Thanks, Slim. Uh, Slim's paying. Cup of tea, please, Bill. Hello, Jungle. Don't you reporters ever go home? Oh, I've got a big job on tonight. Look, Mike, do you know anything about the Marolton family? Eh? Well, what have you got hold of? Well, I'm trying to get hold of. Do you know anything about these Marolsons that never got into a newspaper? Oh, now, wait a minute. That's the story I'm covering. Oh, you do know something. Come on, spill the beans, Mike. Why are you so interested in this Marolton family? Oh, usual case, cheap divorce mixed up with blackmail. Nothing very exciting. It's a queer coincidence. There was a policeman on duty in Lincoln's Inn Fields, found old August Marolton lying up against the railings in the rain at 11.45 tonight. He was as dead as a piece of cold mutton. You don't say. You had a bad heart, hadn't you? A heart, my foot, he was shot. Murder, eh? That's interesting. Oh, didn't you know? No, I didn't know. But I'm beginning to understand something. Listen, Mike, you go back to the office and find out where they put the body. Maybe they parked it in some mortuary not too far from here. Maybe it'll be some time before the CID doctor gets around there. I'm a reporter, not an inquiry office. Do your own dirty work. Look, Mike, you do as I say, see? Otherwise, my memory might go funny about last June and a certain young lady in Brighton. Now, what was her name? Now, come, Slim, you, you don't have to bring that up. I, I'll do anything I can. Oh, well, you're a nice guy. I, I like you. You forget about liking me, Mike. You remember the young lady in Brighton. Slim! Yes, this is Synthes Marlton. Callahan here. Callahan. Listen, I know all that stuff you told me just now was honest to goodness bunk, see? I know why it was so urgent you had to see me tonight. It's not so good. Now don't start arguing. This is what you got to do. Tomorrow afternoon. A.M., dear, not P.M. I shall do nothing of the kind. I think it's a piece of impertinence. Walk around, don't take a cab, and don't let anyone know, see? I don't care whether you like it or not, that's what you'll do. Listen, you can come off that high horse stuff. There's been a nice little murder tonight, in case you didn't know. Think that one out. They took old Marlton's body in an ambulance to the Ansel Street mortuary. What was the mortuary keeper's name? Twist. He lives with his wife at 16 Tremlett Street, just off King's Cross. Good, now get out. Don't forget the young lady in Brighton. Ensel Street Mortuary. Is that Mr. Twist? I want to speak to the constable, please. The Scotland Yard speaking here for Detective Inspector Gringle. Yeah. Are you the constable who found the body in Lincoln's in Fields? Centre speaking. I want you to report here immediately to Mr. Gringle. Oh, I'm sending him relief at once. Yes, get along as quickly as you can. Thank you. Bye.
You, Mr. Twist? Yes? I'm Detective Constable Harris from Scotland Yard, relief officer for the one who had to go. Sorry, I've got a bit of bad news for you. Oh, what's the matter? You live at 16 Tremblett Street, King's Cross, don't no, you? No, my missus. I'm afraid she's had a bit of an accident. Oh. They've got her home. I'll, I'll wait until you come back. Yes. Yes. Dog's going to be fed. to walk through London at this time of night. Morning. Oh, very well, morning. Safer. That is there if I do the talking and you just listen. You've got me into this and from now on you've got to do as I say, otherwise we'll both be in the cart, see? I don't understand. Suppose you tell me what it is you don't understand. Why should I walk here? Sneak out of my flat without anyone knowing? What do you think I wanted you here for? To make love to you or something? Let me tell you, the Callahan Investigations never makes love to its clients. Oh, hardly ever. How dare you speak to me like that? If Mr. Moroton knew he'd... Oh, don't worry about Willie. He'll be too busy to punch me on the nose. Sit down and relax. Please yourself. You get this into your head. I don't do things without a good reason. I told you to walk around here because cab drivers talk. I don't want some cabby go rushing around to Scotland Yard tomorrow, yapping his head if we brought you here tonight. Is that clear? Yes. Here's the rest of it. Tonight, between 11 and 11.35, someone decides to shoot your stepfather clean through the head. They decided to do in Lincoln's in fields. No. That's one for the bag, eh? And here's you, coming around 11.40. Some cock and bull story that your boyfriend, Willie, is scared that one of the precious brothers will do the old man in and somehow hang it on you. And sure as a gun, while you're still talking, it's already been done. That's what I call a coincidence. I didn't know. Of course you didn't know. That's why you gave me 500 pounds, because you didn't know anything about it. Well, maybe it'll be all right. Tomorrow we'll know all about it. All about what? Effie Perkins, my late secretary. While you're talking here early this evening, Effie was listening at the keyhole. Tomorrow morning she'll read the papers, grab herself a bus and go around to Scotland Yard and start shouting. I don't understand. You don't understand. Just what were you doing between 11 and 11.35? I was out. I went for a drive in the car. Did you date me the stepfather? No. You made a date with him and for some reason best known to yourself, you got the old geezer into Lincoln's in and you let him have it. You're wrong. You planned it all very nicely, didn't you? You realized you had to have an alibi. You heard about me, you knew the sort of reputation I'd got. So you worked out that phony story. I was to be the alibi. All right. I'll play it that way. I need that 500 pounds. And anything else I can get out of this. You have to keep some mouth shut, you've got your alibi. You came into this office at two minutes to 11, and you didn't leave here until five minutes to 12. I think that sort of lie is cheap at 500 on account. I think you're contemptible. You won't get anywhere by losing your temper. But I rather like a woman with a bit of a temper. I'm not interested in the women you like or dislike, Mr. Callahan. I'm not interested in you either. In fact, the less I see of you, the better. In fact, you don't like me very much. Well, now we understand each other. This is what you'll do and do without arguing, unless you want to face a murder rap. Tomorrow morning, you'll pack a bag. Tell your maid you're going away for a week or two. Get your maid to put the bag in the cloakroom at Waterloo Station and bring you back the ticket. Is that clear? I'm listening. Take the ticket to Waterloo. In the main booking hall, you'll find a fellow called Zaker. He'll be there at 10 o'clock. You'll wear a white carnation so you can see him. Give him the ticket. Take a tube to Baker Street and go to this address. You'll find a suite of rooms there in that name. Your bag will be there almost as soon as you. It all sounds very clever, Mr. Callahan. But I have no intention of doing anything of the Please yourself at your own funeral. Who are you ringing? Scotland Yard. If you don't do as I tell you, I've got to put myself in the clear. All right. Good. Now you can go home and get some sleep. I'll get in touch with you when I want you. And don't try getting on the phone. The police will be listening in. Can't I even ring William? Leave Willie to me. Who's that? I wouldn't know. You better go this way. There's a back staircase that leads into a side alley. 
Now, don't worry. Everything will be all right. Good night. Morning. Detective Inspector Gringle's on the case. See you later. Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you, sir. This is from the registration people, sir. Coupe car, which was observed outside Callahan's office last night, was traced to Miss Cynthia Smeralt. And there's nothing to show what time she arrived or left? Not as yet, sir. So it gets us nowhere? It tells us that Slim Callahan has got a finger in the pie, sir. If Callahan thinks he can keep on interfering with evidence, this could be the occasion for Callahan to overreach himself, couldn't it, Fields? After all, he can't cover all the Moralson suspects, sir. But he might be fool enough to try. When I think of the past and the Ridley case, would you like me to call on Mr. Callahan, sir? Feels, my friend, in good time, we will call on Mr. Callahan. Slim! Slim! Hello? I got him! Good. Who, what's his name, couldn't believe his eyes. What did the old bloodsucker say? Said he thought he'd got them for keeps this time. Never known you to have anything for so long. What's the setup, Slim? Read the morning papers. What time if I had? Checking up on the Marlton crowd, getting this lot out of Hawk. Setup's murder, Darky. Old August has bumped off last night. By one of them Marlton boys? Maybe, maybe not. So that's why you wanted to know all about him, eh? I didn't know he was dead when I met you. You didn't? How do you come into it then? Who are you working for? I'm working for Slim Callahan, Darky. And the payoff's going to be good. I hope. Here, what time was the old geezer bumped off? And where? Between 11 and 11.35 in Lincoln's in Fields. You want to something? I don't know. But them three Moraltons all had dinner together last night at the Jebboard Club. Sizer says he had never seen such a family gathering. Then they didn't get drunk neither, which was surprising. What time do they leave the Jaybird? About nine o'clock. The waiter told Sizer that from what he overheard while he was serving their dinner, they was reckoning to go along and see Willie. They was going to try and get some dough or some guarantee out of him. That's interesting. You get anything else out of Sizer? <laughs> Only that Bellamy's the real perisher. Oh, the others are bad, but Bellamy makes them look like angels with halos. He dopes. Spends most of his days in bed and his nights at a couple of rotty clubs. The Silver Parrot and the Green Signal. Both run by a man named Arnold Belducci's. Sizer says he gets his dope from Belducci's. Bellamy, I wonder. If you're looking for a first-class suspect, here's the job. He lives well and always has plenty of dough. Although everybody knows that he's spent, mortgaged, and pawned everything he's got. <laughs> Nobody knows where he gets his money from. What about Paul? Paul's a queer cuss. He makes himself about six pounds a week and spends 60. He don't drink so much as the others and spends a lot of time at Somerset House and the company registry looking up things. Does he? And Jeremy? Ah, Jeremy. Now, he's a cat of another color. He was engaged to that scared sinners at one time. Was he? Yes. Now he's got a girlfriend called Mayola Ferryville. They run a place called the Knots and Crosses, the river near Sonning. She's a foreigner, but a real peach. What goes on at the Knots and Crosses? Parties, nearly every night. Car, liquor, women parties, you know the kind. <laughs> Sizer says if you get out of the place with anything but your socks, you're doing fine. Not doing so badly yourself, Darky. There's only one more thing I want you to do for me. I want you to take this letter around to Effie Perkins. I feel I've been a bit tough on that girl. I'm apologizing, see? I wanted to get the apology before she reads the morning papers. Understand? I get you, Slim. You're starting something? I only hope I can finish it. If I don't, it'll probably finish me. How are you going to play this one, Slim? There's only one way to play a case like this, Darky. Find all the people concerned and start something. Get them all worked up. If you can get people scared or angry, they'll talk and they say things they don't intend. And all you've got to do is to listen. Pick out the important bits. It's a good system, Darkie. 
Here, you wouldn't get yourself into anything you couldn't get out of, would you? I know you. If there's a woman in the case, you can be as soft as a blinking schoolboy. Now, now, Doc, you're getting sentimental. Take some of this on account of expenses. Plenty more where that came from. Investigations. Oh, yes. I'm sure Mr. Moralton will see you immediately. Mr. Callahan, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, Sh show him in. I'm so glad you've come, Mr. Callahan. I thought there might have been trouble, but nothing like this. Well, sit down, won't you? There's trouble for synthesis, all right. I came around once, Mr. Moralton, because of Arnold. Very much mistaken. Things will start happening, and happening quickly. And I always like to be one jump ahead. But how bad do you think it's going to be for Miss Moralton? You can speak quite frankly, Mr. Callahan. She's in a tough spot. When she came to see me at 11.35, I thought it was a funny time to choose. I've been told that you've been phoning me all the evening. I thought that was to make an appointment for the morning. Well, that was right. That was my intention. I take it the first suggestion Miss Moralton made to you, she was in some sort of danger, was a few days ago, and when Fingal told you I was the man for the job, you gave her that 500 pounds. That's right. I wondered why she came to see me at the time she did. Till I got an advanced piece of news that your uncle had been murdered. Then I knew why. I was to be the alibi. The alibi? What do you mean? You know what the police say, don't you? They say she came to see me at the time she did. So there'd be a witness to say she was in my office at the time the old boy was shot. Good God, no. Well, actually, she came to my office just after the murder. We don't have to tell anybody else that. I don't believe for one moment... Doesn't matter what you believe, it's what the police are going to believe that's going to give us the headache. She has got herself into a mess, hasn't she? Now, what are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to stick by that fake alibi. If any of your brothers are trying to frame her, that alibi's got to hold good. <laughs> that won't work, you know. The police will get the truth out of her. By the time they get around to questioning her, they won't know where to find her. Well, what do you mean? She's going to hide up through there, sir. Hide up? Well, where? Never mind where. She'll be all right. Don't worry. Miss Moralton, not at home. Sir. Miss Moralton's vanished. Oh dear, what a pity. She left town from Waterloo this morning. Her maid doesn't know where she's gone or for how long. She took a suitcase with her. Looks to me as though she's been got out of the way, fast. Almost seems a sort of stroke that Callahan might put across. He knows the penalty for being an accessory after the fact. He'd never stick his neck out that far. He'd do almost anything for money, sir. And the Moralton girl's got plenty of that. If I get my hooks into Slim Callahan this time, I'll see to it that he stays hooked. So you didn't see Miss Moralton last night? No. Did you see anything of your brothers? Yes, around about nine. No, more like 9.30, I should think. They all three came round to my club. I dined there and was playing billiards until, oh, after midnight. What did they want? They were trying to get a guarantee out of me for a further loan. And they're all up against it. Bellamy is desperate. He simply got to have money. He hated the old man even more than Miss Moralton did. Why did she hate the old boy? She had every reason to, Callahan. He wasn't a nice man at all. He was bad-tempered and vindictive. He made her mother's life an absolute hell. I see. Why is the name Moralton? She changed it to the old man's request just after he married her mother. You and Miss Moralton are going to get married, aren't you? Well, really, does that come into it? Are you? Yes. We've kept it more or less quiet. You see, the fact of the matter is my uncle didn't want Synthus to marry anybody. He wanted her to stay at the home and run his house for him. That's the cause of half the trouble between them, because she left and took a flat on her own. I see. What sort of hats did the old boy wear? Hats? My uncle? Why on earth do you want to know that? You tell me, I tell you. He only wore one kind of hat, a slate grey Homburg with a bound edge to match. You know the sort of thing? What size? I happen to know that as well, seven and an eighth. That's fine. Now, when the old boy was found, he wasn't wearing a hat. Now, that's a situation that can be made a great deal of, if it's properly developed. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand you. You don't have to. Inspector Gringle is going to be very interested in that hat. Well, that'll be all for the moment, Mr. Rolf. Oh, Moulton, alibis cost money, you know. I see. And how much more do you want? I'll be needing 300. Yes, I think 300 will put me in the clear. Almost. Mr. Fingal said there might be something like this. Thanks. 
Callahan, I'm not a poor man, and I'm prepared to spend every penny I've got to help Miss Moralton. But this business has already cost me 800 pounds. I should hate to think that was a payment to you, merely for you to keep your mouth shut concerning what you know about my fiancé. Mr. Moralton, Callahan Investigations never blackmails its clients. When you left that letter? Nope. Only seen her landlady. Said if he was indisposed. Looks if she's gonna do the dirty honest, Darky. I'm willing to bet she's up at Scotland Yard, yapping her head off to Gringo. Oh well, that's what comes of refusing to be the answer to a maiden's prayer. No maiden's ever prayed to me except to leave her alone. There's a whole lot about the Moroccan job in the papers. The police is looking for a fellow that pulled off fast one at the mortuary last night. Where they parked the old man's body? I suppose you wouldn't know nothing about it, eh, Slim? Me? And what would I be doing wandering about among a bunch of stiffs in the early hours of the morning? If you thought you'd get anything by it, you'd sit up all night in a sewer, double-crossing the rats. What have you got there? A little present for Gringo. Gringle, what are you giving him in your hat for? I think he's gonna like it a whole lot. Give me my razor, Darkie. Now light me a match. A match, Darkie. What are you cutting your finger for? But I thought you said it was a present for Gringle. Don't worry, Gringle will get it. Oh, I get you. It's a frame-up. Do you mind what it is? Now listen, Darkie. In half an hour, ring this number. Ask for Bellamy Moralton. And say you're speaking from his club, the Green Signal. All right? All right. And keep him talking, Darkie. Don't go getting too tough with him. We don't want a stiff on our hands. Mr. Bellamy Moralton is not at home. I'm Callahan of Callahan Investigations. I want to talk to Mr. Moralton. It's urgent. It's a Mr. Callahan, sir. The deuce do you want? You're in a tough spot, Bellamy. What do you mean? Your uncle. I happen to know a thing or two about that. How do you know? What do you know? Doesn't matter how I know. What I know is someone is trying to pin that murder on you. Me? I had nothing to do with it. How do you know all this? I was called in on this case in a very confidential capacity several days ago. I obtained certain information. It didn't seem important then, but now that your uncle's been killed, it means a lot. It certainly means a lot to you. I believe this is some trick. What are you trying to put across? Blackmail? Blackmail. If you don't keep a civil tongue in your head, you can stew in your own juice. Oh, all right. I, I'm sorry. I don't want to get mixed up in this business. That's what I thought. 
Explain me why you should be if you let me take care of your affairs. Of course, it's an expensive job looking after people. I thought something like that was coming. But do I know you're not bluffing? You don't. That's the risk you've got to take. The police are all but certain you're the fellow they're looking for. I shan't lose any sleep if they hang you for something you didn't do. Don't talk like that. How much do you want? I'm confoundedly hard up at the moment. Aren't we all? I'll be needing a couple of hundred pounds in cash. That's a devil of a lot of money. Well, if you don't think it's worth it, please yourself. Now, look here. Just you tell me who's trying to fasten this thing on me. Excuse me, sir. It's the green signal on the telephone. What do they want? Uh, they won't say, sir. They say it's important. Oh, confound them as if I hadn't got enough to worry me already. <laughs> What are you talking about? It's your wine bill, sir. It's getting very large and the management is rather worried. But I paid it. Part of it anyway. What, what's that? I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, confound them. Now look, that 200. Couldn't you take a hundred on account? You're wasting my time. But, uh, wait, wait a minute. I could borrow a couple of hundred. Do that, and come and see me when you've got the money. If you're not under arrest. Oh, do wait a minute. Perhaps I can. Just manage that 200. There. Now, I want to know all about it. And it had better be worth it. Who's trying to pin this on me? A certain little lady, slightly related to you. Slightly related to... Oh, you mean Synthes. I might have known it. Of course it's Synthes. You know she shot the old man. You know why she did it. The little... So that's her game, is it? Well, she's got to save her neck if she can, hasn't she? How do you know she did it? I can prove she did it. I don't worry. Callahan Investigations never let his clients down. <laughs> Well, hardly ever. Mr. Callahan, just the gentleman I was hoping to catch. Sergeant Fields, how's the boss? Pretty well, sir. In fact, it was a bit of luck my running into you just now. Inspector Gringle was only saying this morning, now, this is the sort of case in which Mr. Callahan might help you. You said that, did he? Well, why didn't he drop in and see me? I think he'd take it kindly, sir, if you were to drop in and see him. I've no objection. That's very kind of you, I'm sure. Mr. Well, if it isn't slim. I hope we haven't brought you out of your way. Always a pleasure to see you, Gringo. To tell you the truth, Slim, I'm in a bit of a fix, and maybe you can help. Anything you like. You've only to ask, you know that. Oh, I hope that. I said so to Fields. I said Callahan's the fellow to help us. That's what you said, sir. You'll have me in tears in a moment, Gringo. What's on your mind? Well, it's this Moralton case. They've given it to me, and I don't like it much. You know how it is. We can't afford to make mistakes. It's a good thing not to make mistakes, Gringo. That's what I think. I'm glad we see eye to eye, Slim. Look here, Slim. I like you, and I'm going to be absolutely frank with you. A girl called to see me here this morning. Her name's Effie Perkins. Well, she says that Synthes Moralton, the stepdaughter of the dead man, was up in your office last night. She says she's got an idea you're trying to fake an alibi for her. What did you say? Oh, I said I'd look into it. What else could I say? Mind you, I tell you straight, I don't believe it. I said so Fields, didn't I, Fields? I said Callahan wouldn't do a thing like that. That's what you said, sir. No, he's too clever. And besides, if it didn't come off, it'd be the end of him. It's compounding a felony, making himself an accessory after. And all an accessory sorts... after what? Are you suggesting my client's guilty of some crime or other? Now, don't get all het up, Slim. I was just talking, you know that. Look here, Gringle, all this is easy. 
That lady is a client of mine. She came to see me last night about a job she wanted me to do for a woman friend of hers. She came to see me two minutes to eleven and didn't leave until five minutes to twelve. Oh, I see. Well, that's that. Uh, this girl, Effie Perkins, says that your client didn't get to your office until 11.40. I suppose she's got the time wrong. Time wrong, my foot. She's doing it deliberately. I fired her yesterday. Oh, that's it, is it? Women are the dickens, aren't they? Unfortunately, she's very definite about what she says. She wasn't just content to talk. She's made a statement and she's prepared to go into a witness box on it. That's too bad, Gringle, because so am I, and it's her word against mine, and there's proof that she's prejudiced. I wouldn't like to see you go into a witness box and make a fool of yourself, Slim. Someone might remember that Mr. Justice Fairwood warned you in the mirror case that he thought you'd, um, fabricated. Yes, that was the word, Slim, fabricated that alibi. Effie Perkins's story practically amounts to an accusation against you. She even turned down the proposition you put up to her. Just a moment. What proposition? You sent her a letter this morning. You mean that note I wrote her saying she could start work again and I'd run away just up to seven pounds fifteen? That's right. A fifteen bob rise for a lot of extra work and you call that a proposition? Some nasty-minded people might look on it as bribery. Look here, Pringle, I don't like any of this. I don't like your attitude. I'm told I'm faking alibis, making myself an accessory after some crime or other. I'm practically accused of trying to bribe a witness. But don't you try any of your smart stuff on me, Gringle, it won't wash. As far as I'm concerned, you're just another copper trying to be clever. Very well, Mr. Callahan. I'm asking you now if you care to make a statement. If you refuse, I shall have to adopt a different attitude. I've had enough of your threats. One more threat out of you and I'll walk straight round to my lawyers and I'll swear an affidavit to the kind of thing that's been going on in this so-called interview. And we'll send a copy to the Commissioner of Police. Oh, I uh, think you're taking this the wrong way, Slim. There's no need to lose your temper. Maybe I shouldn't have put things quite the way I did. Well, let's put it this way. I want your opinion on two or three aspects of this case. And if you like, we'll ask Fields to uh, leave us alone while we talk it over. Oh, don't worry about Fields. I shan't say anything he can't hear and testify to. I'll do anything I can to help. If I'm treated properly. Now, I think the best way we can begin is for you to tell me what's worrying you. If you think my client's guilty, say so. I wouldn't attempt to shield a murderess. I'm not making any accusations. What I want is evidence. All right, Gringo, I'll play ball with you if I can. Well, that's what I want. That's all I'm asking. Now, I don't have to tell you, Slim, that the first thing in a murder case is motive. Now, here's my guess. The old boy we know made a new will. He typed it himself on a piece of very thin paper and carried it around in his watch case. My guess is he was killed so that someone could get it. Mm, sounds feasible. Did they get it? Yes, after the murder. If you've read the papers, you know how they got it. Oh, that's what they were after, was it? Pretty smart. Now, you're pretty smart yourself, Slim. I know you've got some connection with the Moralton family because since this Moralton didn't come to see you last night just to ask what the time was, now did she? Look here, Gringle, I like you and I'm going to be absolutely frank with you. I think I can give you a tip. I wish you would. I don't think the old boy was killed in Lincoln's infields at all. He hadn't a hat on, had he? No. You haven't found his hat, have you? No. Well, I think he was killed somewhere else and his body dumped. Oh, this is getting interesting. Now, you think, and I agree with you, that this murder was committed so that someone could get hold of the new will. All right. Now, who would it affect most? That's easy. The person who could affect most would be the person who had the most to lose if he didn't get his share of the money under the original will. The person who was desperate for money. The person who had to have money because he had to have... Drug. I'm following you, Slim. Now, you find that fellow. And you've got your man. You think so? Well, perhaps you're right. You've been very helpful, Slim. I suppose you uh, couldn't be a bit more helpful and tell me where I can find Synthes Moralton. I've got to question all of them, you know, just as a matter of routine. Why, isn't she at a flat? No, she went away somewhere this morning. She never told me she was going away, Gringle. I'm afraid I don't know. Well, if you should happen to hear from her, you might tell her I'd like to ask her a few questions. And it would look better if she came forward and answered them. Of course I will, the moment I hear from her. Would you concentrate on finding that dead man's hat? Find that hat, and you've got your killer. I will. So long, Slim. See you soon, I expect. Oh, Gringle. Don't let Fields talk so much. You can't get a word in edgeways.
You are right, Slim. I thought you were lost. I've given Gringo something to think about. Gringo? Did you fix that business with the hat? You bet. The next move's up at Gringo. I bet he moves fast. Who's next on the list? Jeremy and his girlfriend. Mayola Ferrible. She sings at the knots and crosses. Be careful of Jeremy, Slim. I think I'm going to do a little deal with him. What kind of deal? I think I've got something he'll want to buy. What have you got? The last will and testament of the late August Moralton. He was carrying around in his watch case. Then it was you who pulled that first one at the mortuary. I never thought even you would stick your neck out as far as that. If Gringle ever gets onto it. <laughs> Here, which of the Moralton boys gets the old geezer's dough? None of them. He left everything he possessed to Synthus Moralton. There's a bit of a poem I once read that reminds me of that girl. See how she twists and turns in parlor's straits. Finger your neck, sweet. The urgent hangman waits. Miss Moralton's maid. She's not here. I don't know where I she is. I know you don't. I'm Callahan of Callahan Investigations. I'm handling some business for Miss Moralton. I want to talk to you. What's your name? Jenny Appleby, sir. Nice name. Come here. I expect you've had some callers, haven't you, Jenny? I expect Mr. Gringle's been round here. Gentleman from Scotland Yard. Oh, yes, yes, that's right, he has. He told me he was coming around to have a little talk with you. Yes, he wanted to know where Miss Synthus was. He wanted to know about her going away and where she'd gone to. I told him that if Miss Synthus wanted me to tell people where she was going, she'd have told me herself. Of course. Good girl. What else did he ask? He asked me some funny things. Funny? He asked me if Miss Synthus had a gun. Well? I told him she had one, but I hadn't seen it for ages. Anyhow, I'm sure she hasn't still got it. She never had any ammunition for it. Did you tell Mr. Gringle that? Yes, I did, sir. He didn't seem to be too pleased. I bet he didn't. There's only one more thing. Apart from Mr. William, have any of the other Moralton gentlemen visited her? Only Mr. Jeremy, sir. And that was about two weeks ago. Thank you. You're a good girl, Jenny. Thank you, sir. A nice girl. You don't like me very much, do you, Miss Moralton? Lots of people don't. They sort of associate me with the jams they're in. I'm prepared to dislike them for the same reason. See what I mean? Yes, I think I do. Last night I didn't like you very much. I reckon you've no right to be in a jam. You've got money and class and every chance to go straight. I see. When I was tipped off about that murder, I was pretty certain you'd killed the old boy. Did you? How dare you? I've every right to know. I'm in this with you. How? That fake alibi. Gringle's only waiting a chance to grab me and you. I did not kill my stepfather. How are we going to make Gringle believe it? 
He's waiting with a nasty bunch of questions to ask you. When he can find you. Questions? Well, where were you before you came to my office that night? I told you I was at home. I had a headache. You had to lie? You weren't at home. If you were, your maid could prove it. You could have saved 500 pounds. What does it matter where I was? It matters to you where you were the moment the old boy was shot. Under his last will, you get all his money. How did you find out? I've seen the will. You've been lying, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I've been lying. Now we're talking the same language. What were you really doing between 10.30 and the time you came to my office? In the evening, I, I was going to the theatre with William. But I put it off because of a headache. I was going to bed. The telephone rang. It was my stepfather. He was speaking from his private office in Lincolnson Fields. He said it was absolutely necessary that he should see me. And would I go there at 11 o'clock that night? I'd never heard him speak so kindly. I had to go. Did you? Yes. When I got to the office, the door was partly open and the light was on. There was nobody there. I waited about 20 minutes and I left. As I got out into Lincoln's in fields, I saw Bellamy. Are you quite sure that it was Bellamy? Yes, quite. He didn't see me. He disappeared down a passage. I was frightened. I felt that something had happened and that someone was trying to involve me. I, I thought I'd better come straight along and see you. Tired of all this secrecy and hiding. Now, don't worry. I've given Gringo something to think about. By the time he gets around to you, I will have handed him the killer on a plate. You're very sure of yourself, Mr. Keller. I'd do anything for you. Whatever you are. Huh? I've got all my calories here, four fingers worth. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor of Fenivar.
Miss Featherfoot will see you now, Mr. Callahan. I thought she would. Come in. Mr. Callahan, Miss Federal. All right, Andre. Now, now, Mr. Callahan. You say you have something of interest to Jeremy. I reckon I've got something of interest to Jeremy very much. Anything which interests Jeremy interests me. That's what I thought. Sometimes a woman can be more intelligent than a man. I should say always, Mr. Callahan. Look here, Miss Ferrival. I like you, and I'm going to be absolutely frank with you. I'm working for Miss Synthes Moraud. Synthes? I happen to know all about that will that old August carried around in his watch case. I suppose you know about that, too. Yes, I know all about it. Well, that will was pinched by someone who pulled a fast one at the mortuary where they took the old man's body. And you have it? Oh, no, I haven't got it, Miss Fairable, but I know where I can get it. This morning, a fellow called Larry the Dip phoned up. He said he'd got the will, and maybe one of the Moralton boys would like to buy it. Charming. He said that will left everything to Synthes. And if he sent the will around to the old boy's solicitor, none of the Moralton boys would get a penny. This man, what do you call him? Larry the Diff. How much does he want? You're pretty quick on the uptake, Miss Verable. It's a pleasure to do business with you. You mentioned the sum of 500 pounds. That's a lot of money, Mr. Callahan. You're right. But I reckon 500 pounds to get hold of that will and destroy it is cheap. At least I'd reckon so if I were Jeremy Moralton. You do a lot of wreck. Me, Mr. Callahan. I hope it adds up right. When I first met Jeremy in Buenos Aires, he was doing a little business with a Spanish gentleman. The Spanish gentleman thought Jeremy was a fool. He tried to double cross him. He died. Quite right, too. I hate double crosses. I'm sure you do. So does Jeremy. Do you think Jerry may be interested in my proposition, Miss Ferrell? I don't know. Let's ask him, shall we? Five hundred pounds is a great deal of money to hand over to a man like you, Callahan. And what guarantee have I that if and when you've got the will, you'll hand it over to me? You haven't any guarantee. You've got to take a chance. I uh, don't like taking chances when it's not necessary. I have very definite ideas as to the identity of Larry the Dip Callahan. You surprised me. In my opinion, he's no less the person than Mr. Slim Callahan of Callahan Investigations. The point is, do you want that will or don't you? If you don't, stop wasting my time. But I've got to have some proof that you've got it, Callahan. Incidentally, why did you get in touch with me? Why didn't you go to Bellamy or Paul or even William? I thought you two would have some money. You take the mugs you enticed to this place for enough between you. I think it's time to do a little straight talking, Callahan. Why don't you? The first thing I'm going to do is this. I'm not going to pay you 500 pounds or even 500 pence. Is that plain? You don't get the will, that's all. Ah, that's where you're wrong, Callahan. I do get the will. I shouldn't bother to light that cigarette. Not yet, anyhow. I don't like you. Don't like your girlfriend either. Just a pair of swindlers. If you think you can frighten me with that, you can think again. We'll see. Myola, go to your room. I'll knock when I want you. If I were you, Mr. Callahan, I would listen to reason. Remember the Spanish gentleman. Now, suppose you hand over the will. That is the dipster fellow who's got the will. You might as well drop that fiction, Callahan. You'd better produce it. You'll save yourself a great deal of inconvenience. Why don't you stop being such a first-class fool, Moralton? Would I have the will here? Yes, I think you would. You don't shoot. You know that. Not to kill. Just to make a nasty mess of you. You couldn't go to the police about it, could you? They'd be interested in that will. 
Mm. See your point. All right. I don't fancy being turned into a nasty mess. Your sort are always white-livered when their skins are really in danger. Come on, hand it over. Time your boyfriend starts getting tough, make sure he's only dealing with a Spanish gentleman. I get the gist of it. Callahan Investigations? Oh, it's you, Mr. Marolton. Did you ring just now? Oh. He ain't here yet. He's been here all the blinking night. They did what? Well, well, whatever next. I'll tell him as soon as he comes in. Morning, Darkie. Are you all right? All right. Mr. William Marotten's been phoning you. Wants to see you at his office pronto. What do you want? Search me. He sounded excited. You get hold of Fingo? Did I get hold of him? This Paul Marotten fella don't make sense at all. He's been buying up companies that have gone bust. He's bought up four in the last three and a half years. How can he make anything out of that? You'd be surprised in certain cases. Here's your list. Nice work. Now, there's only one more thing I want you to do for me, Darky. I want you to go round to Hillman's, the company lawyers in Fetter Lane. I want the names and addresses of the present directors and shareholders of these companies. All right? All right. Well, you better get the addresses of the registered offices as well. If this Marotten job goes on much longer, we won't need any beds. No, we'll be getting them free at the government's expense. I wish you wouldn't keep harping on that. <laughs> Callahan. What are you two playing at? I told you to keep out of the way. I hope that after today I shall never see you again. By coming here this morning, you stand a very good chance of getting that wish. Surely that doesn't matter now, Callahan. They've arrested Bellamy. I know. I handed him the Gringle on a plate. Yes, well, that's what I want to see you about. But they haven't charged him with murder yet. They're only holding him pending further inquiries. Gringle's no fool. He's taking no chances. Now, look here, Callahan. Bellamy's solicitors have just been on to me. They tell me that Bellamy paid you a great deal of money to keep him out of this. He has told Inspector Gringle. That's just fine. Sick of all these lies. Listen, I didn't tell you to come to Callahan Investigations. You came to suit your own book. Well, now you're going to pay to suit mine. You are insufferable. Maybe I am. But you and I lie low in that apartment until I tell you to show your face. That's impossible. Why? Cynthia's and I are getting married by special license first thing tomorrow morning. That's it. Then whatever happens, we can at least face it together. I suppose you think this is going to be a nice, quiet little wedding that no one knows anything about. But let me tell you, the newspaper has sprayed all over the front pages. Gringle's bound to sit up and take notice. He'll have to do something. I think you're making everything look much worse than it is for some underhand purpose of your own. If you could think, which I find it difficult to believe, you wouldn't talk such rubbish. Look here, my dear fellow. If Gringle knew what I knew, she'd be under arrest right now. And when you get around to thinking again, think that one out. We may be indebted to you for a good deal, Callahan, but it doesn't give you the right to speak to Miss Marolton like that. Miss Marolton is very good at letting people like me know how nasty we are, but when it comes to doing the right thing herself, she's not so good. Exactly what do you mean by that? I mean just this, Miss Marolton. If 
If you agree to marry your boyfriend tomorrow morning with what you've got hanging over your head, you've no right to tell me where I get off the tram. I'm not interested in your opinion of me, Mr. Callahan. Don't worry, darling. We're going through with it. If you made up your minds, you made up your minds. Don't forget, they had to prove murder in this country. Maybe you'll be lucky there, Miss Moralton. Callahan of Callahan Investigations. What can I do for you, Mr. Callahan? The best thing you can do is to get out of the country and get out of it quick. I'm afraid I don't understand. If you want to get your hands on a thousand pounds to make a quick getaway, you can do it if you do as you're told. I don't in the least know what you're talking about. I'm talking about those comic companies who run with Bellamy and Jeremy. Companies? You bought up four old companies that were sunk with debt and refloated them. With yourself, Bellamy and Jeremy as the only directors and shareholders. What, absolute nonsense. You hid behind those companies to get money out of the Moralton Estates and Trust Companies. Your uncle thought he was lending money to four legitimate trading companies in exchange for those phony debentures and share certificates you and your brothers are handing him. I've never heard anything so absurd. No damn good denying it. An examination of the books will provide sufficient proof. And you know it. Yes, there might be something in. You're quite right. How did you find out? I wondered if any of you fellows were interested in any companies. The checkup proved that you were. It's a long stretch for fraud, Paul. How much more do you know? Just about all there is to know. Well, what was that you said to me about getting out of the country? Something about a thousand pounds, wasn't it? Yes, if you sign this confession, I'll give you a thousand pounds to make a getaway. How do I know that you'll give me the money if I sign this? You don't. That's the risk you've got to take. But if you don't, I'll phone up Gringle at Scotland Yard and within an hour you'll be sharing a soul with Bellamy. I wish it to be. There's not much option, is there? I'll take the chance. Uh -uh. Use this one. There you are. Now, where's the money? Just a moment. All this has got to be legal and proper. I've got to witness it. There. Here's your money. Now get going while the game's good. Are you going to keep quiet about this long enough for me to get away? You're a crook, Paul. Callahan Investigations never makes bargains with crooks. Well, hardly ever. Mr. Callahan's put his foot right in it. Is that so, sir? Yes, Fields, it is so. This statement of Bellamy Moralton's will justify me in applying for a warrant. Then you're really going ahead, sir? Yes. There's always been a loophole before, but this time he's done himself properly. There's the hatter's description of him. He bought that hat to shop Bellamy. He took money from Bellamy under false pretenses and tried to frame him. Well, sir, if you're going to take him, I should make it quick. Well, have him picked up and tailed so that I know where to put my hands on him. Yes, sir. I want to see the inspector, sir. So it's urgent. Hello, Gringle. Hello, Slim. We were just talking about you, weren't we, Fields? That's exactly what we were doing, sir. Oh? It may be news to you that we pulled in Bellamy Moralton. Good work. He's telling all sorts of fairy tales about you. Really? Yes. You took him for 200 pounds. Absolute blackmail, he called it. And you told him that since this Moralton killed the old man and you could prove it. A lot of stuff like that. Awful liars, these dopes, aren't they, Gringle? Possibly. And now, Slim, about that hat we found in Bellamy's place. You knew I'd look for that hat, didn't you, Slim? Well, I'm taking the view that August Moralton never bought or even wore that hat. I might even produce some very interesting evidence concerning the sale of it. Good luck. You're very thorough, aren't you, Gringle? You never take anything for granted, do you? Nothing. Now, look here, Callahan. You've played enough silly games and you've landed yourself in trouble. I'm not playing any silly games. I know what I'm doing. Before we're through, you'll admit I'm your best friend. A private detective. Create a lot of situations that'll get a CID man kicked out in no time. Maybe that's what I've been doing. Yes, maybe you have, but you've had your innings. What have you done with Synthes Moralton? I bet you all the tea in China, you know just where she is. 
Your trouble is you can't hang enough on her to pull her in. You're not sure how many people are involved in this murder. And you think by holding your hand, someone will give it away. Touch your finger, Slim. Caught it in the door. Oh, hard luck. You're a mighty smart fella. Oh, I think you are, Slim. I like you too, Gringo. Just to prove I want to help, I'll tell you something for nothing. Two of them are Olsen boys. Jeremy and Paul are going to make a boat for it. Well, what can I do about it? There's nothing in which I can hold them. There's no evidence which implicates them with the murder. They've all got alibis for the time the old man was shot. They were at William Moralton's club trying to get money out of him. They're all in the clear, all except Synthes. And any alibi you can put up for her is going to be shot to pieces. Want to bet on it? I never bet on certainties. Right, take a look at this, Gringle. Paul Moralton signed it half an hour ago. It implicates both Jeremy and Bellamy. Yes, this is good enough, Slim. I'll act on this right away. Fields, get them to send out an all-stations call to pull in Paul and Jeremy Moralton. The charge is conspiracy to defraud the Moralton Estates and Trust Company. Now you know what to do. You bet I do, sir. Oh, and Fields, uh, take care of that other matter, too. Very good, sir. Well, that's a nice bit of work, Slim. But I'm afraid I've got a shock for you. I'm used to him. What's this one? Did you know that Miss Synthes Moralton and Mr. William Moralton were planning to get married first thing in the morning? I suppose you got under that through the special license. Of course. I've got to do something about it, Callahan. What's on your mind, Gringo? I've got to pull that girl in tonight. I can't let this marriage go through. You realize that once William Moralton's her husband, he can't give evidence against her? There's no more real evidence against her than any of the others. And don't forget, she's got an alibi too. I'm not so sure about that. I've taken care of that other matter, sir. I doubt if that alibi of yours would stand up. Not against the evidence of your late secretary, Effie Perkins. I told you before, she's a prejudiced witness. I wonder if she'll stick to her story when she's confronted with you. I wonder. Hmm. Come in, Miss Perkins. Well, 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 if it isn't little Effie. You're willing to substantiate that statement you made last you, Miss Perkins. I am. You're willing to swear that the time Miss Moralton was up in Slim Callahan's office on the night of September the 27th was 11.40. That's right, 11.40. Now, if you know what the penalty is for perjury... How do you know the exact time, Miss Perkins? I checked my watch by the clock on the law courts. When you were lingering in the outer office, what did you hear? I heard Mr. Callahan say, jobs like that cost money, Miss Moralton. And she said, here's 500 pounds. That'll do, Miss Perkins. For the moment. Thank you, sir. Get yourself a boyfriend, Perkins. That's your trouble. I hope you get ten years. Not prejudiced, eh? Well, I think she's telling the truth. All right, put her in the witness box and see where you'll get. I'll tear her evidence to ribbons. Now, look, Slim, there's no need to get excited. Maybe there's another approach. Perhaps you can pull something out of the bag. Well, what about that confession? Oh, that doesn't get us anywhere so far as the murder's concerned, although I admit it was quite useful. It was a good bit of work on your part. I had to work fast and make things happen. Yes, you wanted to keep us off synthesis, didn't you, Slim? I'm afraid you can't do it any longer. Take a look at those numbers, Gringo. Banknotes? Right, they all come from Moralton Estates and Trust Company's account. When you pull in Paul Moralton, you'll find a thousand pounds of those notes on him. I gave them to him for that confession. Well, where'd you get them, Slim? The notes, I mean. I got some of them from Miss Synthes Moralton, some from Mr. William Moralton, some from Mr. Bellamy Moralton, and some from Mr. Jeremy Moralton. Oh, you seem to have taken money off the entire Moralton family for the purpose of bribing Paul Moralton to make that confession. Not entirely for that, Gringo. You work out the significance of those numbers for yourself. I've already got a pretty good idea, Slim. Here, Fields, I want you in on this. Now, listen, Gringo. There's been plenty of suspicion in this case, but no proof. Why haven't you got any proof? Because you haven't yet found the right motive. Why was August Moralton killed? Work that one out and you've got your killer. Why was he killed? Why was he killed? Why? Well, I suppose the will was at the bottom of it. Great jumping Jupiter! Got it? That's why Simpson's Moralton came to my office that night. That's why she had to have an alibi. Have you got it now, Gringo? Yes, I've got it now, Slim. You haven't got enough evidence to hang a cat on. That's why I played it the way I have. That's why I'm going to take the chance I'm going to take. Well, I can't afford to take any more chances, Slim. I'm a policeman. I've got to conform to rules and regulations. You know who killed August Moralton, and so do I, but you've got no proof. Well, we're going to get it. Now, this is what you're going to do. And this is what I'm going to do. We're all going to work hard.
I'm glad you came straight away. Go inside. Are they really going to arrest Synthes? You can bet on it. But maybe I can stop them with your help. That's why I've asked you to come around here at once. I'm sure you will find a way out somehow. I'll do all I can. She doesn't like me very much, does she? No, old boy, I'm afraid she doesn't. Now, how can I help? There's something I think you ought to know, Marold. The men who entered the mortuary on the night of the murder stole that will from your uncle's body. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Wasn't the murder committed to get hold of the will? If it had been, it would have been taken at the time of the murder, wouldn't it? Well, perhaps the murderer failed to find it and tried again later. The murderer wanted that will to be found. I was the fellow who stole it from the mortuary. You stole it, Keller? Why? <laughs> what on earth did you want to do that for? I was afraid it might be dangerous to Mr. Marold, and I was right. What was in the will? Besides robbing Synthes of her fortune, it would be criminal. Fortune would be a lot of good to her if they hanged her for murder. Oh, we've got to get her out of it some way. Anyway. If I can make that fake alibi stand up, we're all right. But can you be absolutely certain that the police will accept it? If I play it my way, I think I might. You know, you've made quite a bit of money out of this one way or another. But believe me, if there's any question of making a bit more... I haven't made any money out of it. What confession? Oh, nothing to do with the murder. But a confession that he and the others were guilty of fraud. Fraud? Yes, I gave him a thousand pounds to make a getaway, but he hasn't got it now. Who has got it? Pringle's got it. He pinched Jeremy and Paul a few hours ago. You fool, Callahan. That scared you, hasn't it? Scared me? I was thinking of Paul and Jeremy. You were thinking of yourself. You're a clever fellow, Willie. You've given me a lot of trouble over this business. What on earth are you talking about? You all four wanted money and you thought up the fake compass swindle. Rubbish. Your uncle trusted you and put you in sole charge of the Marlton Estate, so you were able to work the swindle without any trouble and cover up. You're talking utter nonsense. You hoped he'd die before he found out. He didn't. You made up your mind that if he ever did find out, you'd kill him. Just what are you playing at? But you were up against one big snag. You planned to marry Synthes because you knew she was going to inherit all the money. For her to get it, that will would have to be found. If it was found, she'd become the chief suspect. So she had to have an alibi, and a good one at that. Because if she'd been convicted of murder, that will would have become null and void. That's where I came in. I believed, and I still believe, that Synthes did shoot him. That's a dirty lie, and you know it. You shot Marauder, and no one else had anything to do with it. His intention was to get you both into his private office at 11 o'clock that night and show Synthus what a swindler you were. And you went to his office half an hour before and you shot him. Haven't you forgotten something? You tell me. At the time that I was supposed to be shooting my uncle, I was dining at my club with my brothers. And the police have accepted that alibi. You met in a private room. Near a side exit. So it was easy for you to slip out and slip back. My dear fellow, do you really think they'd have stood for that? They had to, hadn't they? You'd all got to stick together. But luckily for me, Bellamy did go out to see what was happening. That was when Synthus saw him in Lincoln's and Fields. And that's how I was able to scare him out of that 200 so easily. And that's what started me on the checkup of those banknote numbers. 300 I got from you followed on the 500 Synthus gave me. The notes I got from Bellamy were in the same group. So were the notes I took from Jeremy. That money had all come from you. Interesting. It still doesn't prove that I murdered my uncle. No, it only proves the conspiracy to defraud. But I'm the one man who can prove that you killed August Marolton. And I'm going to do it, unless... Unless what, Callan? Unless you give me 10,000 pounds. I see. <laughs> 
So you are just a blackmailer after all. I prefer to call this a business deal. Oh, a lot of money for a little bluff. I think I've rather underrated you, Callahan. Remember, you told Synthesis they've got to prove murder in this country. Well, there doesn't seem to be any proof, does there? You're right. I agree with you. <laughs> for 10,000 pounds, you want some. 10,000 pounds is 10,000 pounds. When he went to the office that night, he told you he'd made another will. He showed it to you. He told you in that will, he left everything to Synthesis, provided she did not marry you. After you killed him, you took that will and destroyed it. And you took the copy paper will, the will that left everything to Synthesis without any restrictions, and you put it back into his watch case. But like every other murderer, you've made the one mistake that will send you to the gallows. Where's your proof? All right, I'll give it to you. If you'd searched that office after you killed the old boy, you would have found he made a duplicate copy of that last one and signed it. I searched for it after I'd been to the mortuary that night and I found it. I got it here in this drawer. That will tells a whole story of your trickery. That will proves that you murdered August Marold. Now do I get that 10,000 pounds? No. 5,000. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life being blackmailed by you. That will is the one thing that can prove that I killed my uncle, and you're going to give it me for nothing. You admit you killed Ogre's will. Give me that will, Callahan. You admit you killed him. Yes, I killed him. Now give me that will. You don't say what I wanted, William. Grimmel! Now get that fellow out of here. Take him down to the squad car and wait for me. Telephone the yard for a doctor. Right. Are you all right, Slim? Give me a cigarette. Nice bit of work, Slim. The doctor won't be long. Did you find that will in the old man's office? Yes, we found it after the dickens of a search. Then my hunch was right. Can I do anything? Hello, what are you doing here? Well, I thought you ought to know what you've done. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Callahan. You see, I didn't know what you were doing. I thought... You thought I was no good, didn't you? Would you like a cup of tea, Slim? Would we? Yes, please. <laughs> Why did you take a chance? If every fellow has his weakness, mine's nice ankles. What's the next job for Callahan Investigations? Nothing. Maybe going abroad. What about Kuhn? Cornwall. There's a house by the sea. It's mine now. Why don't you spend a few weeks there and get well again? Would you be there? Of course. You won't go abroad. No. You once said Callahan Investigations never lets its clients down. Well, certainly not this time. 